Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with a guide to flying the A7M1 in arcade. This is a premium plane introduced in patch 1.53. Its tier 3 and its current arcade battle rating is 3.3. And as I'll show in this video, that rating is far lower than it should be. The A7Ms were planned as the successor to the A6M series. They were designed to be superior in every respect. Faster, more manoeuvrable, better climb rate and capable of carrying a heavier armament. The A7Ms were bigger than an A6M with far longer and thinner wings, providing considerable lift while minimising drag. The A7M1 is the initial prototype of the series, but was equipped with an underpowered engine, making the plane only a little faster than an A6M5. In this video I'll look not only at what the A7M1 can do and how to fly it, but also at its weaknesses, which you can look to exploit if you're fighting an A7M1 in another plane. To start with, let's take a look at its internals, beginning with the armour. Just a plate behind the pilot and a bit of glass in front. Here's the X-ray and look at all of those fuel tanks. One in each wing, one under the pilot, another behind the pilot. This plane is a pilot barbecue, waiting to be lit. Catching fires easy, after which you'll go out in a brief bright blaze of glory. Forget about extinguishing fires in an A7M1, it's just not going to happen. Alright, let's see how it handles and I'll look at climbing first. The plane climbs from a 2,000 metre spawn to around 4,000 metres in two weps at quite a wide range of speeds, from 220 km an hour right up to 290 km an hour. The climb rate itself is good but not outstanding. Spitfires and 109s are better climbers, but the range of speeds at which you can climb really does open up a lot of tactical options. OK, next I'll test its roll rate. Not bad, better than a Spitfire or 109, worse than a fog of 190. How does it go in the horizontal turn? I'm looking at the size of the circle, which is wider than I expected. Also at whether it can catch its smoke trail, almost but not quite, and the speed is stable, just above 300 km an hour. Most A6Ms turn better with combat flaps, so let's see how it goes with the A7M. It's not going to be able to catch its smoke trail, but the important thing is the size of the circle, which to me does look a little smaller, and the speed's around 280, which isn't bad at all for combat flaps. And if I use WEP, it accelerates the plane back up to 300, despite having these flaps extended, and its turning performance hasn't changed. Alright, let's look at the rudder. As usual, I'll hold left rudder and up elevator together, tapping the right roll key to keep the plane on a 45 degree angle. The elevators seem just a little stronger than the rudder, although with both of them together I'm now crossing the smoke trail in this rather steep climbing spiral. My speed drops below 200 km an hour, but I can still climb as these wings have a huge amount of lift. There aren't many fighters that could hang with an A7M1 in this kind of manoeuvre, at these kind of speeds. The A6Ms probably could, Ki-43s... Nothing else, maybe a Chaika perhaps, but this is better than a Chaika in other ways. While I'm nice and slow, I'll just go through some more manoeuvres. Its handling is smooth, responsive and precise. OK, let's move on and look at how it performs at high speed. Let's look again at the roll speed, which many turn fighters lose quickly past 400 km an hour, but not the A7M1. It gets past 600 before its roll speed starts to slow and past 700 and it's starting to get a bit too slow to allow an easy change of direction. The plane passes 840 km an hour in this dive, which for this type of plane is very impressive. Can it track the mouse at these speeds? Yes, but not quickly. At this kind of speed its handling is mediocre, but not as bad as I expected it to be. Next, how well can it zoom climb? I started this climb at 350 metres altitude, doing 750 kilometres an hour, and the plane recovers 2,300 metres before I'd normally look to level off. Corsairs and F6Fs can do better, but that's still an above average zoom climb. Better than an LA5F, for example. I'm going for a stall hammerhead turn, but first let's see how far I can push it in this climb. I hold it all the way uh, down to 8 kilometres an hour, and I still maintain full manoeuvrability as it flips over quickly and wastes very little time snapping to the mouse cursor. And then I take it straight up into a loop, which it has no problem performing. This looks like an absolutely brilliant energy fighter, along with good high speed boom and zoom and an average, uh, sorry, and above average turn fighting abilities. Imagine how good the A7M2 will be when it arrives, with its more powerful engine, reportedly one of the fastest planes in the air at the time, and able to fly circles around Mustangs and Hellcats. 
even with less power, there's no way on earth an A7M1 belongs at 3.3. If you own one of these, then now is the time to make the most of it. OK, let's see what it can do in a battle. I'm using stealth for everything, and quite a short convergence of 300 metres. That's partly due to the different muzzle velocities of its machine guns and cannon, and also because I've always found the Type 99 Mark IIs to be lacking in hitting power. My aim is therefore to try and get in close, where I have more chance of landing a decent number of hits on target. OK, just reaching my 4000 metre uh, climb height. There you can see it runs out with the web just as I hit that uh, altitude. We have a Spitfire that's climbed and a 109. Just climbing a little to the side to see how this unfolds. There's also a couple of bombers in the middle. The Spitfire has an LA-5 uh, helicoptering at it from underneath and he allows himself to be shot down by it, which is rather careless of the Spitfire pilot, I must say. The 109 is tangling with an A7M, it looks like he's running away from him and towards me. So I'm going to track this 109. And as I approach, he goes into a bit of a boom and zoom on a climbing Lockheed Lightning beneath him. So I'll just track him from above, let him get underneath, and then I'm going to dive in and look to intercept if he zoom climbs. He wobbles around the P-38, perhaps thinking of turning back on him, decides it's a bad idea, and then tries to zoom climb, and I'm easily able to turn and follow and light him up. Now I don't want the Ace, other A7M uh, picking off my kill, so I'll quickly turn and finish him off as he tries to extend away. Things to note there, I had no trouble at high speed in my dive tracking that target. You can get right up to 600 km an hour as we saw, and still maintain full manoeuvrability and an extremely good turn rate to let you uh, get your guns on target despite their manoeuvring. OK, what's next? I'm a bit too high, so I'm in a shallow dive to uh, drop my speed a little, uh, sorry, drop my altitude a little, and that P400 is climbing out to the left, so I'm going to intercept. Just a straightforward uh, boom and zoom attack here. Now I'm trying, using WEP to try and close in as quickly as possible because I can see he's stalling. But he's just going to be able to turn over and get away, though I do land some good shots on target. But these cannons are underwhelming. Now I know that in patch 1.53 the hit detection has not been as good as it was in 1.51 for whatever reason. Um, but even so, I've always had trouble with Type 99's Mark II's and with this plane it's no exception. However, I'm going to be able to get a second shot at this guy because he's trying to helicopter at me. He hasn't anything like the horsepower to be able to do that. As soon as I see him start to fall off, I'm into another dive, and now I have him on toast. Except all I get is a lot of sparkles, a lot of smoke, another critical, to his central gear leg, of course, and that's all I'm going to be able to do. But he does uh, have an engine that's rapidly going to die, and that's another thing I do like in patch 1.53. You uh, bust a lot of holes in uh, planes, coolant and oil reservoirs, they will lose their engine in pretty short order. Whereas prior to this patch, they could fly for a very long time without any problems with their engines, which was rather poor. Anyway, so he's going to try and land and he's going to lose his plane because he can't land without the central gear leg, I imagine. I'm pressing down, I'm only at 3600 metres and dropping, looking for anyone who's slightly higher than uh, everyone else is down at ground level. Um, and out to the left is a A20 and a Yak-1, and the Yak-1 is going to hang himself up very nicely trying to reach that LA-5. And this time, the cannons are going to do their work. No problem. Straightforward intercept attack, and into a zoom climb. Now those planes are at spawn altitude, I'm easily going to get above them. Down goes the A-20. OK, there's a Henkel 111 up at altitude, and the question is, do I try and intercept one of those fighters if any of them try to climb, or do I go for the bomber? I was thinking about the Hurricane, but a friendly P-38 engaged him. There goes the P-400. Tried to land. And so I decided I'm going for the bomber, and I'm still in that gentle climb, still well over 300 kilometers an hour. He tried to climb away from me. He uh, tried releasing all these bombs and then going uh, into some maneuvers. But I'm still closing in. He can't escape. Just gently lighting up. I don't want to go blow through all my ammo, although this plane has a ton of ammunition, way more than most Zeros. And yeah, finished him off. And that's something worth mentioning. The amount of ammo you have on this plane, it's rarely a concern running out of it. Okay. Who am I going to attack next? You've got to stay 
active. I could easily just circle around up here and do nothing, but that's not getting the most out of the plane. So, into a diving attack, and I'm really not sure who I'm going to go for here. Um, I was thinking the P-39 would be starting to dive away, so I changed my mind and went for the P-40. And look how easily I can change direction here to adjust to his line of approach and get some good shots on him, but due to a hit detection, or whatever reason, I only got a hit uh, awarded. And an SM-79 has come in. The P-40 tries to follow me and land some long-range glancing blows, so I have to dodge a bit. And I'm going to pick up this SM-79 in my zoom climb, except he sees me coming and tries for a head-on which I'm not going to accept, get out of the way of that as soon as possible. I've lost wings to SM-79s by holding head-ons. Now that's a very manoeuvrable bomber, and he has a big energy advantage over me, but watch how quickly I'm able to nullify it. Firstly, with just a straight horizontal turn underneath with rudder and elevator, and then lifting up into an element overhead. From going into a position where I was almost completely out of speed, and now I'm at very low speed and still have full control, to easily turn inside his attempt to fly with me and light him up. And that's why this plane is so very dangerous, not only to bombers like that, but to any fighter that tries to tangle with it. If you can get them to low speed, which is not hard if you go vertical, um, you can outmaneuver nearly anything. Uh, the only exceptions would possibly be KO-43s and other Zeros. Maybe Chikas, but Chikas you wouldn't fight that way anyway, you'd uh, take them at high speed. So yeah, and this is not only, it's not like a zero that can only turn fight, it, it's fast. Um, and as we can see, as we've seen, it can boom and zoom, and do so uh, quite well. That P-40 I gave some time to decide what he wanted to do after he spawned. He's making a, making a turn to the left, and I'm going to pick him up in a diving attack. Down he goes, at 670 kilometers an hour. I'll uh, continue on toward this P-40. Faces for head on, and I'm not going to hang in the head on with any plane, nor should you, given how flammable this plane is. Now, I've picked up a Yak 7 who appears to have dived from spawn, and he has a fair amount of speed because even though I'm quite fast, he's slowly closing in. Now, I'm going to carry my speed and get away from their spawn because I want to dogfight him, but I don't want to dogfight him close enough for people to interrupt and spoil the party. He's still slowly closing in. I'm going to gain my speed quite low now, and that's deliberate because I want him to be slow. Yaks are good at high speed, not very good when they're too slow. Even though his uh, speed's got to be quite low, he's hanging a bit longer in the climb than I expected that he'd be able to. So I'm going to run a turn, an elevator turn, to get a bit higher than him again, then head back. If his nose drops, I've got an easy shot. Otherwise, I'll avoid him if there's any chance he can get guns on me which is what I have to do. Okay, I have combat flaps extended and I'm going to look to engage him in a turn fight, turning back as sharply as possible. He does the right thing and drops into a dive to gain speed, but then he makes a mistake by deciding to continue a dogfight in which he's completely outclassed. And that was, in the end, a rather easy kill. Okay, now I have another Yak-7 and a Spitfire dogfighting a friendly Yak-9 beneath me, and because of the cloud, I can't really see what's going on. So I drop down a little bit, and yep, I have a nice shot lining up on Spitfire, although the angle's not great. Still able to get a decent shot in there, but only a bit of a rudder damage, and the X7's already turned away somewhere else. So I'm just going to pull out of there rather than get caught into a dogfight where I don't understand what uh, the surroundings are. And by the time I zoom climbed, uh, those guys had moved back toward their own airfield, where they were fighting someone at ground level. And there was another mob fighting at ground level over here. With the uh, battle winding down, there was only one thing left to do, and that was a high-speed boom and zoom attack. So here we go. And by the time I get down to where those planes are, I'm going to be going at over 700 kilometers an hour, which means my high-speed maneuverability is starting to suffer, and I'm not going to be able to um, adjust for when both of these planes pull split S's underneath me. So yeah, no chance of a firing solution there. And with that, the battle was over. That's seven rather easy kills uh, that also showed what the plane can do, but not a great deal of its boom and zooming um, ability, which was uh, on display in this domination battle, where everyone's a bit lower, and I didn't have to quite get to those high speeds uh, in diving attacks. And this really shows what this plane can do with this uh, kind of strategy. Firstly, picking off this A6M2. Flies nice and straight for me. With other cannon, I probably would have taken a wing off, but... Uh, 
a fire will do the job. And now I hold that speed really well for a long, low run towards this group of uh, enemy planes over here. I decide to pick up the P3, and although he dodges around a bit, and I'm travelling well over 500 kilometres now, I have no problem following him and finishing him off. As long as your speed's above 700 kilometres an hour, the plane is extremely agile still. And that's quite fast. I mean, 600 kilometres an hour plus is a really high speed to be uh, flying at and pulling off these kind of manoeuvres. I'm having no trouble rolling and getting a firing solution on this Hellcat. And then carry the speed through into attack this uh, P400. Lit him up. Thought he might have uh, stalled into the ground there with the way he uh, hit the rudder, but uh, he stayed alive a bit longer and the fire finished him off. And because I wasn't paying attention, I nearly wore a head on from a hurricane before someone took him out. But that gives you a bit of an idea of what the plane can do just in a boom and zoom roll. Here's one thing that I isn't great at, and even though its roll speed's pretty good, when you get up to a bit of speed, 600 kilometers an hour plus, I'm beyond my ideal speed for rolling the plane, and this P-38 is able to outroll me and escape. Simply couldn't quite follow him. So if you engage one of these planes at high speed and you have a good rolling plane, use that to your advantage. And here's another thing where I made a mistake, and I'm going to die in this example. I um, was pushing very hard at the incoming stream of enemy fighters, and I wasn't alone. My team had complete domination over them and decided to pick up the uh, P-400 as he's turning in front of me here. The IL-2 I saw out of the corner of my eye was scissoring back. I don't want to wear his cannon, so I make a very risky loop here. And that gets me nicely onto his tail to finish him off, but now I'm very, very close to their fighter spawn and at the same height as the spawn. And I knew there was a Spitfire behind me, and here I make a crucial mistake. I had speed, 476 kilometers an hour to get away. There's no way you could have followed me. But I was thinking at this stage as if I was in a zero, in which case I couldn't have got away and turn fighting was my best option. And so I decided to turn back and then go into a climbing spiral. And this was interesting because I did want to see how well it could perform against the Spitfire 2B. And from being on my tail firing at me, he is now lost contact and I'm gaining on him in the turn. But situationally this is very bad for me because I'm very close to their fighter spawn. It's only a matter of time before someone picks me up. In fact, the BF-109 near my nose there has done exactly that. I'm going to have to break this turning battle with a Spitfire and engage the 109. Otherwise this would be a great way to fight a Spitfire. It's at low, out, at low speed, I can definitely outmaneuver him at that kind of speed below 200 kilometers an hour. But as it is, I've been set alight and I know I'm dead. I've died two other times in this plane, both to fires, and usually it blows you up straight away. Um, in this particular case it took a little bit longer, uh, and someone else finished me off instead, but uh, yeah, don't catch a light, don't let yourself be shot at in this plane, and don't go turn fighting as if you're a zero. The plane's capable of so much more, and you're just going to get yourself killed needlessly. So in summary, please don't just take this plane to the deck and turn fight in it. Um, don't accept head-ons. What you should be doing is getting an altitude advantage and boom and zooming or energy trapping your opponents. Stay fast is your first preference. Only go down to low speed in vertical maneuvers if absolutely necessary. If you're flying against an A7M1 in an energy fighter, approach it like you would a zero. Only attack at high speed. If you're slow, do not, do not engage and never hang around to dogfight it. Only if you're in a Spitfire Zero or Ki-43 should you look to turn with an A7M1, but even in a Spitfire, you have no guarantee of coming out on top. And if the fight gets at too low a speed, you need to break off and get away. If there's an A7M1 with an altitude advantage on you, do not ignore it. Take it seriously, as unlike an A6M, it's an effective boom and zoomer. This is an extremely versatile plane, one of the few fighters that really can do a bit of everything and do it well. And because of that, I'm still learning how to fly this plane. It's not like I'm doing badly in it, uh, quite the opposite. But I feel it has a lot more potential than I've been able to uh, unlock so far. And that's a good thing. Otherwise, I become bored with it. And that's not going to happen anytime soon with this plane. Anyway, I look forward to your comments as always. Don't forget to subscribe. And until my next video, I will see you in the skies.